My dearly beloved in Christ, our spiritual life began at baptism when God infused into our souls sanctifying grace, the three theological virtues of faith, hope, and charity, and the seven gifts of the Holy Ghost. Hopefully, through the years, the spiritual life within us has grown stronger as we've built upon it with our first confession, first Holy Communion, confirmation, our frequent reception of the sacraments, our prayers, spiritual reading, and faithful attendance at the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Unfortunately, in so many people, the foundation of their spiritual life has weakened through sin and worldliness and the anti-Christian spirit of the world. As we arrive into Passion Tide, it's very important to recall the two principal good works performed during Lent, prayer and fasting. We'll speak about that today. Penance serves two purposes. It atones for past sins and strengthens our will for our daily spiritual combat against the world, the flesh, and the devil. Modern technological advances have not removed the wound inflicted on human nature by original sin, a strong inclination to sin. Sadly, self-indulgence and even obesity are a common trend even among children. Our Lord was very explicit when he said, unless you do penance, you shall all likewise perish. Consequently, although prayer, good works, and the reception of the sacraments are necessary for salvation, penance or mortification are also required to curb our selfish and sinful tendencies. In St. Matthew's Gospel, we read the Apostles' attempted to exercise the devil from a possessed child, but were unsuccessful. They asked Christ, why cannot we cast him out? Jesus replied, this kind is not cast out, but by prayer and fasting. This is because they were once very high angels, like Satan, and are very powerful. What must we do in order to truly follow Christ and enter heaven? Jesus said, If any man will come after me, let him take up his, deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Our motive for denying ourselves, fasting and doing penance, should be our love for God. St. Paul proclaimed, In all these things we overcome, he's talking about our own desires, selfish desires, because of him who hath loved us. Because our Savior went before us, fasting, carrying the cross, and dying for our sins, the long ranks of saints gladly followed him, willingly denying themselves to return his love. In addition, fasting united with our prayers gives them immense power. Doctors and advertisers repeatedly stress the benefits of weight loss. Since so many people curtail their normal eating habits and willingly limit their portions of food, we should not find it so hard to diet in order to atone for our sins and do penance for them during Lent. If we're dispensed or excused from the church's laws of fasting during Lent, we still must do penance. Fasting is usually difficult for two reasons. First, self-denial is required when we limit our food intake because self-preservation is our strongest passion. We offer a sacrifice to God when we feel slight pains of, pangs of hunger from fasting. Secondly, the hardest part about fasting is being told by another to eat less. We love our liberty and freedom, even in small matters. By submitting our will to God, we please him very much. My dearly beloved in Christ, when we truly realize the spiritual value of fasting and taming the body, we'll observe the church's laws more faithfully. The requirements of fasting before Holy Communion condition us to give it meat on Fridays and to fast on the days appointed. And then in the preface that we said during Lent earlier, it was talking about how fasting curbs our vices, elevates our mind, 
and gives us so many merits and blessings. Regarding prayer, don't be surprised when the demons attempt to distract you during prayer, cause you to shorten them or omit them altogether. Prayer is our lifeline to God. Despite our human weakness and the efforts of the evil spirits to disrupt and disturb our communication with Almighty God, we must continue to pray with perseverance, humility, and confidence. Unfortunately, the only prayer recited by some traditional Catholics every day is grace before meals. Due to the fact we're living in perilous times and are constantly assaulted by evil forces, it's morally impossible to save our mortal souls without a solid prayer life. We must spend sufficient time every day in prayer to strengthen ourselves against temptation and to obtain the grace of final perseverance. St. Alphonsus Maria de Liguori stated, He who prays will certainly save his soul. He who does not pray will certainly lose his soul. The demons try to hold our tongues and prevent us from praying in every way they can, even though we may experience difficulty in prayer and may often have to battle against distractions. We must never allow our lifeline to God to be severed. Perseverance in prayer will ultimately lead to spiritual and material benefits in this life and will be followed by everlasting happiness in heaven. Let's just close with a story. St. Dominic was a noble young Spaniard who lived in the 13th century. In early youth, he made a vow of chastity, which he was able to declare on his deathbed he had never violated. He burned with zeal for the salvation of souls. The sad state of morality in France, which he observed when he passed through that country with his bishop, determined him to found the order of preachers, or the Dominicans. The Albigensians were the communists of that day. They were heretics who pillaged, and fanatics, who pillaged churches and murdered priests while they rejected morality and despised all authority. And they thought, they taught that murder was good, suicide was good, having children was bad, etc. St. Dominic dedicated himself to the work of saving the souls of these people. He went about preaching. Three times during each night of prayer, he scourged himself. He made little headway. He appealed to the Blessed Virgin. The heavens opened and the Mother of God, holding a rosary in her hand, appeared in dazzling brightness to her servant and said, Be of good courage, Dominic. The fruit of your labor shall be abundant. The remedy for the evils you lament will be the meditation on the life, death, and glory of my son, uniting thereto the recitation of the angelic salutation, in other words, a Hail Mary, by which the mystery of the redemption was announced to the world. Having explained the devotion of the rosary, she continued, This devotion you are to spread by your preaching in a practice most dear to my son and to me. It's a most powerful means of putting away heresy, extinguishing vice, propagating virtue, imploring divine mercy, and obtaining my protection. I desire that you always promote this manner of prayer. The faithful will obtain by it innumerable graces and will always find me ready to aid them in all their wants. This is a precious gift which I leave to you and your children. In other words, the Dominicans and other Catholics. Full of gratitude, Dominic went to the city of Toulouse. The people, by a mysterious call, had already assembled in the church. Okay, remember, they didn't have telephones or the internet and all that. So when they rang the church bells, that means some, these are wars going to occur or attack or there's some danger or something. So the angels rang the church bells and all these people assembled into church. St. Dominic ascended the pulpit and preached about the devotion revealed from heaven. For a while, the people paid little attention to him. A violent storm arose. Lightning lit up the church, and peals of thunder resounded. A statue of the Blessed Virgin began to move, pointing to heaven and then to St. Dominic, as if imploring the people to listen to him. The hearts of the people were touched. The victory was gained. 
The people begged to be taught this wonderful devotion. Historians tell us that more than 100,000 Albigensians returned to the true fold. Since the rosary is a devotion so dear to Jesus and Mary and so fruitful to aid you and others, especially the church, make frequent use of the rosary every day. Pray the rosary every day. Never let a day pass without saying it fervently. It will bind you closer to the mother of God, and that is the sure way of reaching God and saving your soul. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, Holy Ghost, amen.